Let's consider this example. Solve for the variable correct to two decimal places where necessary. So it looks to us as though it is a quadratic equation. We have an x squared and it is currently not in standard form. So your first instinct might be to multiply out and get it into standard form. Let's see what happens if we do that. So x squared plus 3x all squared is x to the power of 4. x squared times 3x is 3x cubed. We'll have two of those, which will give us 6x cubed plus 9x squared. And then if we subtract the x squared, the 6 and the 3x from both sides to equate it to 0. If we tidy this up a little bit, 9x squared minus x squared is 8x squared minus 3x minus 6 is equal to 0. And now this equation that we are left with is actually a big problem for us because x to the power of 4 plus 6x cubed plus 8x squared minus 3x minus 6 does not factorize the way that we know how to factorize. So we, it's not a quadratic trinomial. It's got five terms. So if we start grouping, we're going to have to group three terms and two terms. So that won't give us a common bracket. And it just, it's not, we simply are not going to be able to factorize this. So we need to approach this problem from a different perspective. And if we look at the structure of the original equation, here we have an expression of x squared plus 3x. Here we have an x squared, and here we have a 3x. And because we have those repeated elements, we can use a method called substitution in order to solve and see uh, solve this equation and see if we can get it into a more manageable form. So if we just start again, that equation that we started with was x squared plus 3x all squared is equal to x squared plus 6 plus 3x. I'm just going to rearrange things a little bit on the right hand side so that we've got the x squared and the 3x together. Okay, if we look now, it's quite obvious that this x squared plus 3x is a repeated expression. So in order to simplify this equation and to make it a little bit easier to solve, we're going to take that x squared plus 3x and we're going to let it equal another variable. Oftentimes the letter k is used as the variable, but you can use any variable that you like. I'm going to use the variable m. So wherever I have an x squared plus 3x in the equation, I can replace it with m. So we will have m squared because the whole of x squared plus 3x is being squared. On the right hand side, we'll just have m, the whole of x squared plus 3x becomes m plus 6. Now I'm sure you'll agree that that's a much more manageable equation for us to try and solve. So we can go about getting it into standard form. m squared minus m minus 6 factorizes, it's a trinomial, so it will factor into m minus 3 and m plus 2. And therefore we can conclude that m minus 3 is equal to 0 or m plus 2 is equal to 0. But we were not solving this equation for m. We were solving it for x. So our next job is to go back and now replace the m's with the x squared plus 3x. So we will have x squared plus 3x minus 3 is equal to 0. And the second equation will be x squared plus 3x plus 2 is equal to 0. Okay, now we need to factorize. x squared plus 3x minus 3 sadly doesn't factorize because 3 times 1 is the only uh, pair of factors for 3 and they don't add up to 3. So we're going to have to use our formula to solve this equation. So if we just make a list of our coefficients, the coefficient of x squared is 1, the coefficient of x is 3, and the constant is negative 3. So our um, equation is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. And now I would like you to um, practice on your calculator, pause the video, and see if you can um, punch that into your calculators and get the, the other values of x in correct to two decimal places. Okay, so you should have got x to be 0, 0,79 or x to be negative 3,79. On the right hand side, this expression factorizes. Pause the video here and see if you can factorize that expression. 
Okay, so that will give us x plus 2 and x plus 1. So therefore, x is negative 2 or x is negative 1. Okay, so we can see that this equation actually has four solutions. And if we go back to the previous slide, that actually makes sense because our highest degree on the our degree on the polynomial um, is x to the power of four, so we would expect there to be a maximum of four solutions to the equation. So here we can see that this equation has all four of its solution has all four solutions. Okay, there is an example in your homework book for you to try. So please pause the video here and solve this equation: negative three over two p squared minus p minus 4 is equal to 2p squared minus p. Alright, we can see here again that we have a repeated expression of 2p squared minus p. If I start trying to multiply through by the lowest common denominator, I can see here when I multiply the 2p squared by 2p squared, I'm going to have 4p to the power of 4, and therefore it's going to be difficult for me to factorize. So because I have that repeated expression, I'm going to let the repeated part of the um, equation equal to a different variable. I'm going to choose the variable a. And wherever I see a 2p squared minus p, I'm going to replace it with a. Okay, we can now multiply through by the lowest common denominator, which is a. Let's beg your pardon, that shouldn't be negative 3a, it should just be negative 3 because the a divided by a is 1 minus 4a is equal to a squared. And if we just get that into standard form, it will be a squared plus 4a plus 3 is equal to 0. Okay, that will factorize into a plus 3 and a plus 1. So therefore, a plus 3 is equal to 0 or a plus 1 is equal to 0. But we're not solving the equation for a, we are solving the equation for p, so we now need to substitute our a's for the 2p squared minus p. So it'll be 2p squared minus p in the place of a. In this equation, it'll be plus 3 is equal to 0. In this equation, it'll be plus 1 is equal to 0. Now, you will find that neither of those expressions, neither of those equations factorize. So this, you have to use the formula in both cases. Here, your a is 2, your b is negative 1, and your c is 3. So your um, p, rather, not x, we're solving for p, will be equal to 1 plus or minus the square root of negative 1 squared minus 4 times 2 times 3 all over 2 times 2. And here, if you calculate the value underneath the third sign, you will get a negative value, and that means that this equation has no real solution. If we look at the other side, our a is 2, our b is negative 1, and our c is 1. So p will be equal to 1 plus or minus the square root of negative 1 squared minus 4 times 2 times 1, all over 2 times 2. Again, if you um, punch in what's underneath the third sign into your calculator, you will get another negative value, which means that this equation also has no real solution. So there are no values for p in this equation that will make the left and the right-hand sides equal.